This is reality, Sermon D1. Is this printer any good? Is this worth buying? To find this out, let's go back in time and start with unboxing. Inside this box was 3D printer, but in many different pieces. I do call out of the box and then start investigating what is what. The assembly starts with the bottom piece. To the bottom piece I had to screw 4 those side profiles. Obviously all the bolts and tools are included with the printer. You know, the assembly it's time consuming, but it's not difficult. The instructions are really clear. You just need to screw some things together and nothing else. Hot end is already in place and the most of the wiring is done for you. When the sides are done, next I had to attach those aluminium profiles. Those will be the C-axis rails. And when those are in place, it's time to install bed. And it was pretty difficult to reach this coupler. The printer top piece will be attached to the rest of the printer with four M6 bolts. Exactly like the bottom piece. But here is a problem. The C-axis top switch is broken. This is well known issue with this printer, it's probably because error of the packaging. It cost 1 euro. By the way the Creality told me that they can send me the switch, but I refused because I already got a new one and 1 euro is not a big problem for me. So I connected the wires to the new switch and it's good to go. Now when the switch is repaired, let's start this printer for the first time and see do my new switch work properly. Yep, it seems ok. I continued with the plastic corners, acrylic walls and doors. Now the printer is ready. I started with bed leveling. This is obviously the first thing to do. Bed leveling is not automatic, but the printer has this bed leveling assistance. Plus it's really easy to reach those knobs. Finally, it's time to start printing. I wanted to start with Creality own models from SD card that came with the printer, but for some reason this printer didn't read any of them. So I was thinking that maybe this printer gonna read folders. I moved those models out of the folders, but still nothing. Then I was like, whatever, I sliced my own benchy boat. This printer heats up for PLA printing temperatures really quickly, and this printing pad. It's a glass plate that has on the one side really interesting rubber texture, and it seems to work really well. Because when the print was finished and the bed was cooled down, my benchy was completely released from the bed. For the first print, this benchy turned out really good. The only little things to complain are those blobs on the boat hull. Little tweak with the reduction settings and problem should be solved. Keeping in mind that I have absolutely zero experience with this printer yet, I can say the result is surprisingly good. This printer is not fully enclosed. The printer top side is completely open, but same time the hot end can reach 250 degrees and print bed over 100 degrees. It's perfect for ABS, so let's print ABS. For the first ABS print, I used my transparent filament and it turned out absolute rubbish. I lowered the temperatures a bit and enabled 30% print cooling. By the way, yes, you can use print cooling for ABS, but this is not this video topic. So my second try, the model game loose. For my third attempt, I used a bit glue stick and lost my time lapse. But this time I succeeded, and this benchy bow turned out really great. But this doesn't mean that you can print all kind of ABS parts. Not even close. The next print is the real test. In my last video, I built this storage box and those drawers. It have really high and thin walls. It's an absolutely perfect test model for ABS. If this printer succeeds with this test, then the drawer will be exactly like this one. But if not, we will see a lot of layer separation on the walls. And yeah, this is an example from the textbook what will happen when you print ABS without enclosure. 
We will test this printer more, but let's do a quick overview of this printer features. This printer has 280x260x310 mm printing volume. This heated bed can reach up to 100 degrees and C-axis has two stepper motors. This printer is really silent. I mean really silent. I haven't done any scientific test, but I'm sure that this is the most silent printer with what I have ever worked on. This printer has filament runout sensor and its location is really good. If you run out of the filament, add a new spool and you can resume the print. The direct drive extruder is all metal and the whole lot and design looks really compact and complicated. This 4.3 inch touchscreen is really responsive and the user interface is really simple to use. In the middle of the print, you can turn on and off print cooling, change print speed and adjust printing temperatures. On the Creality website I saw they mentioned that this printer is enclosed, but it's not, it's partly enclosed. We all know that hot air is going up and then the top side of the printer is open, which means all the hot air can escape, so even if the sides are closed, it's not helping for ABS or other materials that need an enclosure. But now let's go back to the printing. I have made absolutely amazing print with this printer. This orange vase, it's turned out nice, but if you see, there is a little bit stringing between those lines. Those are so thin that it's hard to catch on camera, but they are there. After this vase, I played around a bit with the redaction settings and I didn't get any stringing problems with my next prints. Oh boy, this is my favorite, the Empire State Building. Not only is it look like chocolate, this turns out level perfection, almost. Yeah, I really love this model, and this printer print is so well. And by the way, it's printed with 100mm per second, so it's quite a fast. And this undead skeleton or however it was called, you know, do I even have to say something? Hmm? If you look closely at the head, this level of details is uh, pretty wonderful for FTM printer. I also tried to print TPU, uh, this top here, my slicing fault, I printed this model with uh, zero infill and of course the top failed, but this printer prints TPU easily. And this print in place gear bearing is clearance test. Those gears break loose really easily and they are turning just fine. But ok, let's wrap this video up and speak about things that I like and that I don't like with Creality, Sermon, T1 and should you buy this printer. I start this time what I don't like. Number one, obviously the broken C-axis end switch. If you buy a new printer, of course you want fine and working order machine, not start immediately buying new parts and repair the brand new printer. But Creality told me that they know the issue and they are fixing or already fixed this problem. So in the future you should not have this problem. So if this is fixed, this should not be on this list anymore. Number 2, the printer is almost enclosed. The top side is completely open. Creality has done really great job with the frame and the enclosed sides. This printer can easily reach ABS printing temperatures and then the top are completely open and all hot air can just escape. So this is one thing that this printer should have, closed top and then we can call this printer fully enclosed printer. Number 3, one thing more is missing. But this is only my opinion and this is not a deal breaker at all. Because this printer is beautiful and this printer has a bit enclosure, <laughs> I think there should be lights inside. This is something that is really easy to do by yourself and when I finish this video I am already looking forward to do this little upgrade. And number 4, well actually there is not number 4. 
I first was thinking that I add to this list that assembly was time consuming, but in my opinion, this was not so big of a deal at all. If I didn't have this broken switch and no need to mess around with the camera, I believe the whole assembly time should be around one hour, maximum two. And for sure it was not difficult, even Ender 3 assembly is more difficult. And keep in mind, you have to do this only one time. And now, what I like about this printer. Number one, absolutely there is no doubt about this, it's really beautiful printer and the frame is really well built. Number two, this printer is really silent. Like I told before, this is probably the most silent printer with what I have ever worked on. Number three, printing quality is really great. We saw proof of this multiple times in this video. Well, this is a reality printer, so there is no question about this. Number four, I really like this glass plate with this texture. Print stuck on the printing surface really well and when the bed was cooled down, the model was completely released from the bed. And number five, really responsive touchscreen and the user interface is easy to use and looks really nice. So, should you buy this printer? If you are looking for not fully enclosed printer and that has reasonable printing volume, I think this is a really great option. So, yes. And the price? I believe this is fair. So this is it for today's video. Thank you for watching and see you guys really soon. Bye.